Okay, in this video, we will be talking about supporting action. Another video on supporting action. So I'll go to supporting action or supporting tools in the platform. Uh, we had recorded some videos on other topic. Uh, today, I want to go into the support area and talk about captured lessons learned. Now we have a document and the knowledge portal about why do we call things captured lesson and captured lessons learned and we distinguish between the two. However, basically what's important right now is that uh, obviously you can go and find that document and read it. It's in the knowledge portal and the PM clarification uh, section. Uh, what can you do with captured lesson on the project? The most basic um, uh, section is that adding a captured lesson. So let's say you are working on a project and you want to add a captured lesson. Uh, basically, you will be able to go and enter any information you want. <clears throat> the lesson's title, uh, the lesson's description, you describe the situation. And uh, there are some questions here that are important for performance chart and important for learning for the future. For example, did the lessons need to change uh, to a change or a variance? Right. So basically, um, you know, if you don't know what's the difference between change and variance in our vocabulary, that maybe in another video will explain that. Uh, but basically, it says, okay, and did this lesson learned cause us to have variance or a change? Yes or no? And we can explain. So let's say yes, and then we can provide an explanation, or you can explain basically, or, or then yes or no. Um, and then uh, we have, did the lesson lead to a change in the company process? Sometimes you might run into something that said, hey, you know, our process is not working. We need to modify the process. Now, the project is not responsible to fix that process, but at least you'll highlight it over here. And if you have a project management unit in the company or department or office, then maybe they need to, to take care of that process. And then, uh, uh, you know, when we encounter this problem on this project, what, what was the suggested solution? What was the impact of the lesson? Did it have a cost impact? Did it have a duration impact? Uh, and if the cost impact, what it is, if the duration impact, what it is. And for duration, uh, we need to always to remember to say it is hour, daily, monthly, whatever, and then any other comment, right? So it's quite comprehensive what you can include here on, on capturing the lesson. Now here you can see it's grayed out because it should be automatically generated. The captured lessons number within the project. So the first one here, and if you click on the root coach, this is an automatic number applicable within the project or the program. So if it was the first lesson on this project, it will be number one. If it is the fifth one, it will be number five. However, this number here is that for the entire workspace, for the entire organization. So maybe on this project, it was lesson number one, but in the organization, it may be number 51. Right? So this will be automated here. And then usually, if depend on the tailored method, we should have the tailored method code. This is something right now, it's, maybe it doesn't mean a lot to you, uh, but at least uh, we can explain later what this means for, for the time being, treat it as information. Who is the initiator name? When discovered, when documented, and if it belongs to the project and program, you need to mention them here. Or ideally, if, if we are already on a project, Maybe this should be automated. Um, and who is the project and program manager? Because maybe you are a team member. You are not the project manager or program manager. And what stage of the project? And then the relevant supporting tools or action. Uh, that uh, by supporting tool, meaning uh, cost, schedule, scope. Uh, so basically, this is will help us for, uh, uh, for searching later on and for guidance. Now, one thing I did not mention, I, I was showing you the form, so basically you add a captured lesson, you add all information, is when you submit the form, typically it should go to something we call a CLL administrator. Now, when the client admin, when you, you know, on an, an organization, there should be a client admin, the one, uh, that employee of the client that manage the platform, invite users, and do a lot of setting of the platform, uh, that person should also up, up, assign or at least that person in a small company, that person could also function as a, an administrator. So let me, uh, we have a client administrator and we will have a client, a captured lessons learned administrator. And also there is another module called the client library. There will be administrators there. 
So initially, all these administrators could be one person, but as the organization get bigger, it could be split up. So for the captured lessons learned, when a user add a captured lesson in the system, um, we don't want to just automatically add it to the database. It needs to go through some filtering. It goes to the uh, CLL administrator uh, because maybe there is something like it in the system already or whatever the case might be. And that person, uh, they can review, discuss, whatever the case might be. And if it was approved, it get added to the captured lessons database. Uh, now, in this uh, module, there are other things we can do. But uh, I haven't built a lot of data on captured lessons yet to show you how this works properly. However, there is uh, there are this kind of uh, things. Uh, so if I'm a project manager, I'm working on a new project or I'm working on a new stage and I want to learn from our history. So one thing I can do is that click on database review and I should be able to see a database. Uh, obviously right now this is empty and I will be able to search to see for the lessons that are relevant to my project or similar to my project. And I will be able to search on them and, and basically check uh, to see uh, if any of them applicable to me and I review them. Now, then you have this captured lesson. Uh, basically, once I review those information, I can add, uh, no, I think I click on the wrong one here. Uh, let me go back. As I was saying, basically you can do, you can review the captured lesson from the database over here, or you can go and review the, the uh, uh, here it allow you to enter you can see add and this add over here it allow you to put comments so let's say I'm, I've gone through the database I selected a project that applied to me or selected case that applied to me and I can go review them and then fill this form for example was the review valuable yes or no and somewhat and I can put comment so we can learn as an organization of from our captured lessons learned because the idea if you only capture them and they go on database, we have not learned. So on every project, we need to review the database and filter it to be able to look at what, okay, what are some of the lessons that I can learn from them? So if they were good, maybe I can repeat them on my project. And if they're bad, maybe I should be, obviously I should be doing something to avoid them. Uh, so here you have a bunch of information, but notice also at the bottom, we have something we call estimated cost avoidance. So let's say I've learned there was a lesson that might have cost the project before, uh, you know, $5,000. And my project, let's say it's similar in size and type, and I've learned that lesson right now, and I would be able to avoid it. So here I can document that, hey, I'm estimated, I'm estimating that I'm avoiding uh, $5,000 of impact if I apply this lesson. Now, this might be very difficult to do and always not easy to estimate. It could be very judgmental. Uh, this is where, you know, a lot of things, you know, a platform cannot solve for you. It requires a lot of training and education within the organization to identify what might be need to, what need to happen and how can we estimate these things. However, this become very valuable if we are actually, it, it kind of become an indicator when we're looking at the executive dashboard that we are actually looking at our lessons learned. We're not just documenting them and putting them into a database. Uh, we are reviewing them, we're checking them, and we're trying to learn from them, uh, reapply the good one and avoid the bad one. The same thing we can have here on the schedule. Now on the right is basically it would include any lessons that we have. Uh, right now, as you can see here, a lot of dummy data uh, because we don't have any lesson. Uh, so basically, but at least it have the project uh, that is that we can uh, capture that learning. And with that, I think that most of it, we can do status reporting. This is something, an area we have not worked on. We need to, to fix uh, or we need to, uh, to implement. How do you do status report for captioned lessons learned? Uh, with this, we can close this video.